Okay, let's do some vector math here to solve this problem. And uh, let me explain to you what the problem is because uh, it may not be that clear to you. But basically what we have here is a boat and it's traveling 10 knots due east. So here's our little boat and it's going 10 knots in this direction east. And now we have a cross current and it's going due south and it's two knots. So the current in the water is due south so obviously it's going to be pushing this boat off in some sort of direction this way. And what we want to determine is the actual course and speed of the boat when we factor in this current uh, that is two knots due south. And uh, in order to solve a problem like this, you're going to need to understand uh, vectors. So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, this is uh, probably top from uh, most of you out there on uh, maybe second year algebra, certainly if you're like in a pre-calculus course, but maybe you, uh, if you're like in a college algebra course as well. But even if you've never um, uh, studied vectors, if you stick around for a couple of minutes, you'll learn how to solve a problem like this. So uh, not that difficult, but we're going to uh, use some basic uh, trigonometry as well. But I'm going to get into exactly what to do to solve this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, my goal, my passion is to really help all of you out there that are trying to succeed in math. And if you feel currently right now that you're not getting enough instruction or maybe um, the right instruction in your math course, well, then I can help you out. So I totally understand that. I mean, I was a student as well, not always a teacher. So it can relate to, um, and I've seen this too as a teacher, is that you know sometimes some of you out there need more instruction. And what I try to focus on is clear and understandable math instruction. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you break through whatever barriers that you might be uh, struggling with to be successful in math. Now, if you are preparing for any type of test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplace, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam. You get the idea. There's a ton of tests out there, and uh, there's always this pesky little math section on there. I can help you prepare and succeed on those tests. If you homeschool, you absolutely have to check out my homeschool math program and curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use my notes. I'm going to leave uh, links uh, to my math notes also in the description of this video. But if you want great math grades, you got to take great math notes. Just remember that, and you'll see your grades start, uh, start to skyrocket. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at this situation again. We have this boat. It's going 10 knots uh, due east. Okay, and I'm going to talk about how we really uh, want to lay out this problem, but this is just a quick rehash of uh, vectors or an introduction to vectors. So we got the boat going uh, due east 10 knots. We got this cross current going due south at two knots. What's the actual um, uh, direction, okay, or the course or heading of the boat, and what speed is this boat going to be going? So let's take a look at a simplified version of this. And the main idea with vectors, whoops, oh, I don't want to show you all that just yet. All right, let's focus back here. Is a vector is something we use in math, and a vector basically represents both uh, speed and direction, and we use arrows to do that. So an arrow, okay, like here, this arrow right here could maybe represent um, uh, the, a boat going five knots due east, okay? So let me just write this a little bit clearer. So the length of the arrow is the actual indicates the speed of what we're trying to represent. So a, a boat that's going due east at 10 knots, the arrow would be twice as long. Okay, something like that. Okay, so this would be 10 knots. So with vector math, the actual direction, okay, this is going, this arrow is pointing due east. The direction makes a difference, and the length of the arrow makes a difference. So here, we're kind of graphically representing what's going on here with these arrows, and that's a, a vector, okay? So a vector has both magnitude and direction. So here, we have this long arrow right here, and it uh, has 10 units of measure, and it represents 10 knots, and it's going due east. And then we have this cross current, okay, or our current in the water, 
and it's going uh, two knots south. Okay, so it's uh, going in this direction. Uh, just kind of real quick here, right, with the compass. Uh, this is east, this is west, this is north, and this is south. Okay, so our boat is going east, okay, and our current is going south. Now, the way vector math works, okay, what we're looking for is um, what we call the resultant vector. So we have a little arrow here that represents the current. Now notice that I have the beginning of this little vector that represents the current is starting at the end or the tip of this arrow that represents the boat. And this is what we, this is how we construct a, uh, a vector problem. Okay, so what you're going to do is the tail or the tail of your second vector is going to start at the tip of your first vector, just like this, okay? And what we're looking for is this vector right here, okay? So if you think about it, if the boat's going in this direction, okay, and you've got a current that's going this way, well, what's going to happen to the actual boat? Well, it's going to actually get pushed in this direction, right? I mean, just kind of common sense. The current is going to kind of push it off in this direction, and it likely is going to it's uh, speed up the boat as well. Okay, It's going to kind of push it off in this direction and maybe give it a little bit more speed. Whereas, let's just take a look at uh, this situation. If I had uh, the boat going in this direction, now I had the current going into the boat. What would happen uh, if it was going directly into the boat? Let's say the boat was going due east and the cross current was due west. Well, all that would do, the, uh, the cross current would slow down the boat, but it wouldn't affect its direction, okay? So in this particular uh, situation, this uh, current, okay, is going against the boat this way, so it's definitely going to push it off to a new course. So that course is going to be this course right here. So we need to determine this angle that's going on right here, and we need to determine the length of this part of this triangle, okay? And this is how we do vector addition or vector mathematics. Now, this is just a quick overview of vectors. Um, really, when you want to learn and study this stuff, you want to do it in a more formal uh, way, of course, because there's a lot more that you need to know about vectors. And if you are interested in studying vectors, learning more about vectors uh, with me, you want to check out my pre-calculus course. I do have a few uh, vector additional vector videos in my pre-calculus playlist on my YouTube channel as well. But this is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get the length of this part of this triangle that's being formed here and this angle, and we will answer the question. So let's kind of look at this a little bit more precisely. Okay, so here is the situation. We got the boat going uh, 10 knots due east. We got this cross current or this current going two knots uh, due south. Okay, so that's south. So what we need is the length of this uh, triangle, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, because this is a cross current, so east and south, we are forming a 90 degree angle. That's important there. So uh, you'll see why in a second. So we need the length of this hypotenuse, the hypotenuse of this triangle, and this angle here. Okay, so uh, if you think you have the current math skills to answer this question, I kind of set it up for you just in case you didn't know how to you know, interpret the problem, but that's what we need. We need the length here of this triangle, and we need this angle. All right, so if you have the current math skills, we're talking about basic trigonometry, and we're talking about a formula that all of you hopefully know. But uh, if you want to go ahead and, and attempt to answer this now, being that you understand the setup, go ahead and pause the video and put your answers in the comments section. All right, but I'm going to get into the full solution now. But what I wanted to do first was obviously just get you to uh, understand the basics of what's going on with the vectors. Okay, so here is our 10 knots. Okay, it's due east. We already have this kind of triangle already set up, so we have to just focus in on solving the different, uh, finding the missing uh, pieces of information with this particular triangle. So the first is going to be the length of this hypotenuse. Again, this is a right uh, triangle because, again, we're, we're dealing with the boat that's going to due east and uh, the cross current is due south, so that's going to form 90 degrees there, okay? All right, so to find the length of this hypotenuse, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and hopefully you remember that. You're like, oh, yes, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to solve for C, which is the length of the hypotenuse. So 
we're going to square each of these uh, shorter sides. So that'd be 10 squared plus 4 squared. That's equal to C squared, or in this case, V squared doesn't make a difference. Same uh, uh, information. So 10 squared, that's 100. Uh, 2 squared is 4. So C squared is equal to 104. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of C squared is C. And the square root of 104 is approximately 10.19 okay so this is 10.19 approximately okay there's other digits but what does that represent well that represents the speed of our boat okay so our boat is going off in this direction at 10.1 uh 10.19 knots so it picked up a tiny little bit of speed because that current is pushing it so it just picked up a tiny little bit of speed it certainly didn't slow it down um, again, you know, logically, you know, this kind of makes sense. I'm like, yeah, maybe it might have just, you know, sped up the boat a little bit. And that's, in fact, what it did. So that's what we have right now. We have the new speed or the actual speed of the boat in the water. But now we need to get this angle right there. So how do we do that? Well, this is going to require some basic trigonometry. And hopefully you're up to speed on your basic trigonometry. But uh, if you kind of forgot, I'm going to go in and show you. What we're going, to, we're going to want is the tangent, okay? So the tangent, if you recall, uh, remember your so, ka, toa. And if you're not familiar with basic right triangle trigonometry, I have tons of videos on this in my um, pre-calculus and geometry playlist. But basic right angle trigonometry, this is our little famous phrase here. The sine is equal to the hypotenuse or the opposite of the hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over the adjacent. So with this angle here, the 10 right here with this angle, this is the adjacent. Uh, this side over here would be the opposite. And then this longest side is obviously the hypotenuse. Okay. So with respect to this angle and its uh, location, I'm going to be thinking about I have the A and I have the O information. So TOA is what we need, i.e. the tangent. Okay, so the tangent is TOA or opposite over the adjacent. So when I'm looking at this angle, where is the opposite uh, side? It's this side. So that's going to be 2. Okay, and it's very easy to confuse this. That's why you gotta, I'm kind of walking you through this. And the adjacent side is the side that's next to the angle Okay, or adjacent to it. So that's 10. Okay, so opposite over adjacent, 2 over 10. So there you go. So the tangent of this angle is going to be 2 over 10, or the tangent of the angle, 2 divided by 10, is 0.2. So to find the actual angle, I need to go into my calculator and use the arc tangent. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, by the way. Uh, it should always be on degree mode unless you had a reason to change it to radians. But oftentimes what students do They'll work in radians. There's a, a, a mode um, button on your calculator. You'll work in radians, and you'll forget to go back to degrees. Okay, you always want to put your calculator back in degrees uh, because that's you know kind of the default way we like to measure angles. But we want to find the arc tangent of 0.2, i.e., what angle in degrees has a tangent of 0.2. So you need this little function right there. Uh, and, of course, this will be on your scientific calculator, so it's going to be the second button in tangents, or you should have this right here, this uh, come up in your calculator. So the arc tangent point two um, is going to be, uh, is going to tell us our uh, angle here, okay? What angle has a tangent of point two? It is 11.3 approximately. So 11.3 degrees, because your calculator, again, is in degree mode, and that's what this angle is, okay? 11.3 degrees. So we have the speed, okay, or the length now of this uh, right triangle, okay, which indicates the actual uh, speed of the boat when we factor in the current. And now we have this angle 10 uh, or 11.3 degrees. Now, let's kind of make this uh, accurate in terms of actual headings on a boat. So uh, if you got these uh, two things right, by the way, outstanding, I think I will go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, a few check marks, and a couple stars to make you feel extra special. But you really want to kind of put this together in a more you know, appropriate way. So when you're dealing with vectors, speed and directions, either with airplanes or boats, when you have north, 
uh, south and east and west. North is uh, always going to be like zero degrees. Okay, then you're going to go this way. East is 90 degrees. South is 180 degrees. And west will be 270 degrees. And of course, all the other degrees will be within uh, our, what we call our headings or bearings will be uh, in this way. So this, our original uh, direction, okay, our boat, we were steering it at uh, 090 degrees, okay? Our current was due south or uh, one eight, uh, two knots at 180 degrees. So where's our resultant? Where's the actual course of our uh, boat and what's the actual speed? Well, if we were on uh, 090 degrees, but uh, we're, when we factor in this current, we have 11.3 degrees this way, so we're really starting at 90 degrees plus an additional 11.3 degrees, so we're going to want to add those up. So our true heading is going to be 101.3 degrees approximately at 10.19 knots. So you're, you're steering the boat 090 degrees, but we have this uh, cross current that is affecting us, but that's really going to put us on a course of 101.3 degrees and our actual speed will be 10.19 knots. So this is the actual answer. Now, if you got that right, then I must upgrade your happy face to include a good old 1985 Mohawk and an A+. Nice job. All right, now if you're new to vectors, I kind of, um, I was kind of quickly going over some of these concepts uh, in there, but you certainly need to understand vectors. Vectors are tremendously important uh, in mathematics and in science. Like if you're going to take a physics class, which I highly recommend that you do because physics is an awesome uh, course, you're going to be using vectors uh, tremendously and you're going to need to know a lot about them. But again, remember that the basics of vectors, a vector represents both speed, okay, or magnitude and directions, and we use arrows to solve problems like this. Okay, so hopefully this was a good little review for those of you that are just starting to get into vectors or maybe forgot about vectors. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And um, you know, my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math. So I do things from arithmetic all the way up to calculus. So again, my goal is to try to teach in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all the content that I've made. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.